Yo, yo, it's your boy Jay Boogie back. Another video today. Make sure you guys don't forget to press that like button on TikTok. Press the like button on my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel right here. And today I'll be talking about part two of the all decade 2010s team. Pretty much the second team of the 2010s, all decade second team. And at the point guard, so I'm at the point guard position, I got no other than the Brody himself, Russell freaking Westbrook. Russell Westbrook was just the most athletic guard in that era, besides Prime D Rose. And pretty much Russell Westbrook seen this clip. He was just phenomenal in all aspects of the game, offensively, defensively, in terms of his effort. And, you know, pretty much in his prime, especially with OKC, he was just real dominant. And this is a guy that had a deadly pull-up mid-range and transition. Super duper explosive, super duper explosive hands to the rim. Attacking the basket, punching down with dunks on anybody that's coming his, through, through his way. And Westbrook, you know, pretty much right around the 2014-15 season when OKC was uh, basically dealing with injuries and missing playoffs. But during that one specific season, that's when he was starting doing the triple doubles. And since then, he hasn't looked back. And to have consecutive seasons to average a triple double, then eventually leading the all-time triple double leader in triple doubles is insane. And Westbrook, man, just phenomenal in terms of his work ethic, his passion, his dedication influence other people and Westbrook you know getting a lot of flack of course post KD he kept getting back out the first round but Russ needed KD and OKC and KD definitely needed Russ just couldn't get over the hump and you know pretty much Russell Westbrook obviously is one of my favorite players in the league so you know like you've seen this clip you know, of how aggressive he was in his prime mid-range game was unlocked a decent three-point shooter and then but that that just that raw passion of giving 120% every single night, you cannot beat that. And Russell Westbrook, man, pretty much deserved to be on the second team list, of, you know, of the 2010s all decade, let alone seeing his stats, see the accolades. You know, it's two-time scoring champ, led the league in assists twice, and, you know, like I said, consecutive seasons, averaging a triple-double. And, you know, Russell Westbrook, man, is one of a kind, just raw athletic ability, pure excitement, hits to the rim, dunking on people, and you can't, you can never question his effort. And you know Westbrook, like I said, he was a great finisher at the basket. You know, with the right hand or left hand, either hand given. So Westbrook definitely deserved to be number one on this list at the point guard position. And at the shooting guard, <laughs> excuse me, and at the shooting guard position, I got no other than. Some might not like it, some will. I got no other than Clay freaking Thompson. Clay Thompson, you know, playing under Mark Jackson for a few years, elevated his opportunity to showcase his shooting ability of how good he was. And then after Mark Jackson left, you know, of course he became an all-star. But Clay Thompson, man, I love his shooting form. Got one of the best shooting abilities in the league history. Obviously the second greatest, second greatest three-point shooter behind Steph Curry, no doubt about it. And you've seen his highlights from his 18-19 season. His, his biggest strength, obviously, is his catch and shoot ability and stand still shooting because what I call it is a pocket form already in a pocket, and then he just goes straight up and just flash it. And Clay Thompson, you know, in his heyday, in his prime, he was a good two-way player ever since the defend. Uh, I believe one season, I think during the 2018-19 season, he made all defensive team. But Clay Thompson was a good two-way player, definition of three and D, and pretty much um, Clay Thompson, man, he's, like I said, he had one of the greatest performances you see right here in this clip from his 60-point game career high on only 11 dribbles against the Indiana Pacers of Paul George and Jeff Teague. My bad, Jeff Teague. <laughs> But Clay Thompson, man, you seen this clip from his 60-point game, his career high. Dude was just phenomenal and only just on 11 dribbles. Like, it's crazy. And that's how good of a catch-and-shoot player that he is. 
doesn't even need more than 10 dribbles just to put up 60 points. And Clay Thompson, like I said, man, the accolade speaks for itself. You know, the all-star appearances, the all-NBA appearances, and Clay Thompson, man, was just on the rise. And like I said, this prime dude was a great two-way player, um, great three-point shooter, and moving off the ball was just as dangerous as Steph Curry, and trying to defend them two off the ball was a nightmare. And you know, like I said, Clay Thompson, to me, Steph Curry is the greatest shooter, but and if you break it down further, Clay Thompson, to me, is the greatest catch and shoot because he has such a great pocket form, and once he catches it, he's already it's, it's already natural, it's, na na nature. <laughs> natural for him to shoot the three ball and catch it and knock it down. But Clay Thompson deserves to be number two on this list, no doubt about it. And at the small forward position, I got no other than Durantula, Kevin freaking Durant, KD. Whew, man. Behind LeBron, him and KD at the small forward position, neck to neck. You, you know, you get, you know, hey, them dudes was out of battle during the 2010s. KD, phenomenal score, isolation score. You seen this clip from his OKC days. Then just straight pure buckets. Dude was just out of his mind. Four-time scoring champion in the 2010s. Dude was just a great, pure, efficient scorer. Got the three balls in mid-range, of course, finishing at the rim. And like I said, being that 6'11", maybe 7 foot, but really 6'11", with guard-like driven ability, you know, this dude has some very, very nice elusive handles. And he already has a long wingspan. Got a nice form jump shot. You can't block him. And he was clutch. And obviously, we can't forget about his MVP season. Pretty much from pretty much in this clip is from his MVP season. And, you know, pretty much he had two proms. But I'll talk about that second prom in a minute. But his RKC days, man, he was just a pure scorer. I mean, like I said, a four-time scoring champion. Then, you know, winning MVP. Then, you know, unfortunately, after they went to the finals, they couldn't get, you know, over the hump. Knocked out second rounds a few times, and then, you know, conference finals appearances, and then, unfortunately, you know, blowing through one lead to the uh, to the Warriors, and, you know, in the conference finals in 2016, but besides that, Kevin Durant, OKC Day, was just a, a pure entertainment of his isolation scoring ability. The Hezzy pull-up was OD, you know, like I said, you already have a long wingspan. The Hezzy pull-up was just an OD move to add because he couldn't block his jump shot. And he has such great form. And then you see right here, definitely Warriors days, which is more OD. Okay, now you gotta worry about him, Clay, and Steph Curry. And he was just pretty much the best player on the uh, Golden State Warriors team. And he was just, just as dominant, two-time champion, two-time MVP, back-to-back -back years. And you know, could have been a three-time Finals MVP had he not got hurt in the 2019 NBA playoffs. Uh, I pretty much, you know, he rushed his Achilles, unfortunately. But, you know, KD had basically two good primes of OKC and in Golden State. And you see he was just as dominant when he arrived to o uh, not OKC, when he arrived to Golden State Warriors. Pretty much the most skilled player on the team, the best player on the team. And like I said, Kevin Durant, any version of Kevin Durant you want is a good Kevin Durant because he's just a pure hooper. That's exactly who he is, a pure graceful, gifted hooper. Just go out there, get straight buckets, calm demeanor, don't do nothing extra. So shout out to KD. Definitely deserve to be at the small forward position on this list. And then moving on to the power forward. No other than Draymond Green. Draymond Green, definition of a great facilitating point forward, a defensive point forward, great leader. You know, honestly, his stats, his stats is not the biggest, you know, eye-catching stats. But his impact alone, his IQ, and his defensive impact alone sets him out on this list. And how important he is, you know, on that floor for the Golden State Warriors in their the heyday. Still to this day, but more in their heyday, you see how he was actually the true point guard. Sent up to offense, a half-court sets. A great communicator on defense. I feel like this is biggest strength is his IQ on defense, but he was a great communicator on defense, on the screen, the switches, the mid-matches, the backdoor cuts, all of that type of stuff. And Draymond Green 
impact alone sets, sets alone just enough about of how good he was during that prom of him Clay and stuff basically the you know the heart and soul of the team and like I said you gotta give him credit IQ the impact and you know ability to you know take over games of his presence alone and you know they need that so bad and like I said Draymond Green accolades winning um, defense player of the year well deserved for that year because he was phenomenal defensively and you know pretty much Draymond Green was just the most impactful player to me, most important player in that heyday, you know, going to State Warriors because of his IQ ability. And then moving on to the center position, I definitely ain't gonna like this one, but well deserved. No other than Big Spain, Mark Gasol. Also, I'm from Memphis, so I'm gonna be a little bit biased with this one. <laughs> um, you know, pretty much Mark Gasol, man. Camden Lee, known as a really known as a post up player, banger in the post, but then he got more elusive with his offensive skill, knocking down a mid range shot, defensive, great impact. You know, the cold four of him, Mike Conley, Tony Allen, Jibo to Memphis, that had a tremendous impact to the city, and he definitely was a big part of that. You know, pretty much making all NBAs with the Grizzlies, all star appearances with the Grizzlies. Great playoff moments with the Grizzlies, <laughs> making deep playoff runs. And Marcus Saul, man, and also he won, of course, Defensive Player of the Year. So Marcus Saul was the true definition of was all around skillful center, great passer, know how to set up teammates, especially when we get in the post. He know how to read the defense, read the offense. A great rim protector, a great defender, a great help defender in the paint, great rebounder at times. And Marcus Saul was just an all-around great center for the Grizzlies, and then all eventually, deservingly so, winning his first championship with Toronto in 2019. But Marcus Saul, when you look at his highlights and skill set, you can't deny it. And like I said, he was such a great, tremendous impact to Memphis Grizzlies and to community and to the city with him, Zebo, Mike, and Tony Allen. So that's my take on the all. Decade 2010 teams, second team, second team list. And you like this video, like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever you gotta do. I love you guys. Let Kids Trainer going. Jay Boogie is out.